Yo, what's up? You are watching Necromancer Spellslinger Volatile Dead Complete Build Guide by Jamon. So, the league is coming soon, 3.15, so that's why I started making full build guides. If you know me, if you follow my channel, you already know this is gonna be a good video. So, if you are new to the channel, uh, expect lots of build guides from me, so I upload regularly, so consider subscribing and don't forget to like this video and maybe share with your friends. I have lots of other full guides coming soon. If you have any uh, build um, ideas maybe, if you want any build that we want me to explain, also don't forget to join my discord, you can maybe give me some ideas. Let's first have a look at what Spellslinger is and how this build works. So Spellslinger is a blue gem that comes at Act 3 actually, so you can just easily start playing as a Spellslinger while leveling. Trigger supported spells when you fire projectiles from a non-triggered wand attack. So first of all, you want to attack with a wand attack. You can actually um, use default attack, but that doesn't make any sense because it doesn't have any benefit. That's why we are using Frenzy. So frenzy is a skill that also can be used with wands. That also generates Frenzy charges, which are obviously providing more damage. And also attack and cast speed. That's why we are using Frenzy. Supported skills have added spell damage equal to 100% damage of equipped wands. So actually your weapon, your wands damage also matters in this build so maybe you can get some fire damage once you learn the mechanics so actually fire damage also works because we are actually using volatile dead which is a fire skill that's why fire is one of the good stats that uh, works for this build because volatile dead actually requires corpses to be cast you know to be uh, so you can actually spawn them <laughs> all right we actually have another spell slinger setup which is with uh, desecrate Desecrate is a skill uh, that actually summons corpses. You can up to summon 10 corpses. We will also use spell cascade support, so you can just uh, summon 10 corpses with a single wand swing. So you will just have 10 corpses ready, and bam, the other spell singer setup will just consume those corpses and spawn those volatile deaths. So basically, whenever you use Frenzy, if uh, your spell singer is not on cooldown, because this actually has a cooldown 0.6 seconds. You can even use cooldown reduction items and labyrinth enchant that is on a helmet to even reduce the cooldown uh, more. So once you have good cooldown and attack speed, you can actually trigger this a lot uh, thanks to these uh, stats, cooldown reduction and attack speed. So you will have lots of volatile death spawning. So why we are using volatile death? Volatile death actually alone doesn't do much damage, but you can actually summon lots of volatile uh, death orbs. Maximum 60 orbs at a time. So even before attacking a boss, if the boss has maybe phase, immunity, whatever, maybe if you can attack at that time, because you don't actually have to hit the enemy. You can just uh, swing your wand to some, some empty space actually. Use your frenzy and you can just summon 60 orbs if you have the time. And once the boss is activated, it can just kill the boss maybe if you have enough DPS. So you can actually pray... Um, Summon your orbs, that's what I am trying to explain here. And also these volatile deaths have automatic targeting, so you don't have to do anything at all. So this build is very easy to play, new player friendly, very fun, uh, have a good mapping uh, potential actually, farms maps uh, very fast, very fun. And also for mapping, uh, bossing, I mean, it's also a very powerful skill. This build is actually uh, way cheaper compared to most of the other uh, meta builds these days. Because this build actually isn't that popular these days for some reason. And plus it's a fire build, uh, which is not that popular actually. But this is a very powerful character. So the main skill is Volatile Dead. I'm going to explain the rest of the gems in a second. So let's just first also check uh, the character we are using and why we are using the character. So the character we are using is a Witch Necromancer. Which is actually a very popular character. But most people obviously place this character for minion builds. But this is not a minion build actually. So why we are using Necromancer? So first of all, let's just check some of the notables that she has. Plaguebringer, if you have consumed a corpse recently, you and your minions have area of effect. Volatile Dead also has area of effect, so you can clear maps easier. So this actually works for this build. With at least one nearby corpse, uh, which are gonna be all the time. You and nearby allies deal 10% more damage, which is a multiplier. More uh, actually is better compared to increased, so this actually provides a lot of DPS. With at least one nearby corpse, nearby enemies deal 10% reduced damage. Uh, this is not less damage, but still good for some uh, mitigation actually. Corpse Pact, 
attack and cast speed for each corpse consumed recently we are consuming corpses all the time because this is how this build works because whenever you use volatile dead you actually um, consume those corpses with uh, good attack speed and cooldown recovery rate you consume lots of corpses in four seconds that's what recently means so you can actually achieve a lot of attack speed once you start triggering uh, your volatile deaths enemies near corpses you spawn recently are chilled and shocked uh, which is fine chill is obviously slows enemies shocked is for some damage taken actually so this actually provides some damage and finally, corpse you spawn have 50% increased maximum life. This only applies for the detonation part, by the way, because volatile death has two uh, damage instances, let's say. First, corpse explosion, then the spell portion. The most damage comes from spell portion, obviously, but this also has some benefit. Mistress of Sacrifice, your offering skills also affect you, but have some other effects also. So normally offerings are for minions, but if you pick this one, you can actually use it for yourself. So we are using bone offering grants minions but uh, because we have this notable minion this is actually only uh, this actually works for us all right uh, grants us let's say 35 percent block attack and spell damage so provides us a lot of block uh that's why this character is actually a block character so our main defense is a block and finally commander of darkness auras from your skills grant attack speed and cast speed to you and allies and uh, you and your allies deal 30% damage which is fine and finally 30% elemental resistances which makes uh, capping resistances actually very easy with this character so this build actually starts as a life version because it is easier to gear at a day one with zero budget but after some point you want some good dps obviously to increase that boss dps even more we are actually playing as low life so once we play low life it means that it's an energy shield build in the end game and that's probably what you are watching at the background all the time uh that's why actually block is very important because energy shield builds are very squishy uh, if you don't have any good defense like block fortify or whatever you can think of that's why this character is very good for end game uh, with the energy shield version a lot of block you can even cap your block and this is not even glancing blows block by the way this is pure block meaning that you won't actually get hit if you block the attacks and spells so this is a very tanky character in the end so make sure you follow this guide carefully so in this part i'm gonna explain the gems first uh, because i want you to understand fully what's going on with this build i just don't want you to just copy paste the builds all right that's what i am doing in this channel i am actually um, explaining everything that i can think of so you actually know what you are playing uh, so yeah let's just first explain the gems all the gem setups after that uh, we can check the items obviously so first of all your main setup is a volatile death setup with spell slinger that i explained earlier because this is a spell actually uh this is also a fire skill so anything that works for fire spell and also aoe because this also has aoe tag area of effect so those kind of gems obviously works for this build so control destruction more spell damage but this reduces our crit chance this is not actually making your crit chance zero. Uh, most new players think that this actually makes your crit chance zero. This actually just lowers your crit chance by 100%. So if you have any 100% increase from items and talent tree, that actually negates that. This doesn't mean that your crit is zero. Our crit is actually more than 50% in the end game. Even 60% if you have good gear. So actually, we, this is actually a crit build, all right? So don't uh, don't get confused. If you are a new player concentrated effect more area damage less area of effect because we are summoning lots of balls that reduced uh, less area isn't that actually important because we have very good clear speed so more area damage obviously gives us a lot of dps elemental focus again this is an elemental build fire is elemental that's why elemental damage more elemental damage this is very good and finally spell cascade so this should be in your first four link by the way spell cascade is very important so normally we use desecrate let's just first explain that you will understand why we are using spell cascade actually so we have actually another spell slinger setup which is um desecrate so spell slinger attached to desecrate and another spell cascade so spell cascade is a support that also makes the skill uh, cast in front of and behind the targeted area so you actually summon more desecrates summon more uh, volatile deaths so desecrate actually um, 
spawns corpses because volatile death is a corpse skill we actually need corpses to cast our volatile death so once you swing your wand you will just use desecrate because it also has spell cascade you will just cast it multiple times so you can actually spawn maximum 10 corpses so with just with just a single uh, wand swing you will actually summon 10 corpses instantly so after that your other spell slinger is obviously volatile death it will just consume uh, any corpses that it can because it has spell cascade you will just uh, use that volatile death multiple times actually so in the end once you invested enough you will actually also gonna pay for a vacant spell cascade because without that you cannot actually consume all the 10 corpses that's why in the end you want to invest for a vacant spell cascade this also lets you use uh, the volatile death in front of behind and on each side of the target area so a vacant spell cascade actually uh, consumes more corpses because it has more stuff going on in it so definitely worth the investment so our other skills let's just explain those we have bone offering for our defense that i explained earlier because we have we are playing a necromancer that's why we are actually benefiting from that offering so we will have lots of block we have a conviction so what this skill does is basically reduces the enemy's elemental resistance matching highest damage taken because it's a fire build we want fire damage the most uh, but once we have you know our buffs auras later on you will automatically have that fire damage as highest so you can just easily apply fire resist reduction so you will have more dps obviously and a curse choice assassin mark this is a very good curse for bosses because marks are only cast at a single target uh, that's why this will mostly work for bosses lots of crit chance and crit multiplier and if you also use Anomalous, if you invest for that later on, uh, it also has 4% increased damage taken, so a lot of DPS. This is going to be in our trigger setup, in our wand, uh, which I'm going to explain the wand in the item section. So actually these three skills, uh, we are not actually using this ourselves. They will just get triggered automatically. So even at the leak start, after a couple of days, you can easily get a trigger wand easily from maybe other players if you cannot find the craft yourself. So make sure that maybe you buy it from someone else but maybe if you are playing in ssf uh, that can be hard for you but obviously i'm not going to explain the build as if you are playing in ssf we are talking about softcore league the new league in 3.15 or whenever you are watching this video so frenzy this is for proking our uh, spell slingers that i explained earlier so other stuff that we are using a uh, barrage combustion Enemies ignited by support skills have minus 25 resist, more DPS technically, and power charge on crit chance. Uh, if you get crit with the skill, you have a chance to get power charge. Power charges obviously provides crit chance. Because this is a crit build, this is also good. So we are using barrage, so our frenzy actually hits a lot of times uh, in a second. If you don't use barrage, you will just use only one frenzy at a time. So that's not very good. So once you use the barrage support, you will have more projectiles attacking the target so you have higher chance to ignite so combustion will get activated uh, faster actually and also you will have more crits happening uh, other skills let's just check immortal core for defense you can actually use this on left mouse button so it will get activated all the time immortal call actually provides us less elemental damage taken and less physical damage taken and if you have any endurance charges which we will have once we have cluster jewels later on you can actually remove those endurance charges and get even more physical damage taken reduction so this is a very good guard skill make sure that you put this on your left mouse button for mobility i mostly use flame dash if you have any other good options maybe like normal dash you can also go for that so flame dash is very good actually if you have any open space you can also put arcane search so you will have more spell damage so the final gems that i'm gonna explain uh, are a little tricky First of all, because Spell Slinger reserves mana, that's why you cannot actually use much auras or buffs at early game once you are playing life base. Because later on you will just uh, transition into energy shield, which means that also low life, thanks to Sharon's wrappings, uh, body armor, that's why you can actually reserve your life and mana. So you will have more uh, stuff to reserve, so you can actually get some auras uh, and also buffs like Herald of Ash. Anger, Zillotary and Discipline. 
but you cannot use these at leak start with life base gear actually so just check the path of building so don't make any mistakes obviously but uh, i will just also explain these gems so once you have uh, low life gear charon wrappings and also prism guardian these are the core items by the way uh, socketed gems cost and reserve life instead of mana so that's why you can actually reserve your life so we will also use lots of buffs the buffs that you are seeing on the screen so you will have way more dps that's why you want to transition into energy shield uh, as soon as possible once you farmed your currency but a chevron even with a five link is fine to just start uh, you know playing you don't need a six link to start so once you have the prism garden shield chevron's wrapping chest some other uh, budget options, let's say, uh, items, maybe gloves, boots, those kind of stuff. So make sure you have some decent energy shield. At least 6k, let's say. Maybe 5k is enough if you are at a uh, leak start, obviously. So make sure that you go for low life as soon as possible. Because that's where the damage will shine. You will just get maybe almost a double your DPS, you know. Because uh, normally once you are playing as life version, you cannot reserve any of these auras. Because we don't have any mana left. That's why uh, transitioning into energy shield low life version is very crucial for this build uh, as soon as possible. Now that you understood uh, what's going on with the build, the gems, let's just explain the items. So I will just explain some items, you know, like a weapon or boots, whatever. I will just first show you the leak start version, the life base version, because you cannot start as an energy shield, unfortunately. After that, I will just show you the energy shield version. So I will just finish all the uh, possible upgrades in a single piece and i will just go by piece all right piece by piece so first of all weapon so because spellslinger also applies uh, the weapons damage to spells you can actually also get add fire damage those kind of weapon damage actually so adds blah blah to blah blah fire damage that also works because this is actually not spell damage but it works because this is for spell damage actually and spellslinger so it's a unique it has a unique interaction actually so any fire damage let's say fire damage to spells fire damage to attack global fire damage increased fire damage um, crit multiplier because it's a crit build crit chance for spells that's also good maybe spell damage that also works so these kind of stats are your uh, choice of stats you know the good stats but you will also need an open suffix so you can actually um, craft trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill with a 8 second cooldown so this is actually an unveil from june to the betrayal encounters this is what i explained earlier if you cannot find this yourself maybe you are unlucky make sure that you buy this from someone else maybe from a friend or don't forget to join my discord there are thousands of players here so make sure you ask it in the craft help section maybe someone will eventually craft you this all right so just don't uh, be shy and ask for help because this is very important so you can use that, that uh, trigger setup that I explained in the gem section. Uh, the offering for block, assassin mark, curse, wave of conviction. Because they are very important for both defense and at, um, offense. That's why you will also need an open suffix as soon as possible. So try to get a combination of these skills. So this is actually a budget wand under an exalt. Uh, that's what I paid for it. Uh, very cheap. So this is an early game wand. So later on, if you have good budget, uh, you can actually also get something with plus one level of spell gems or fire gems. Because Volatile Dead is both a spell and a fire that both works. So anything with plus one gem. Again, spell damage, fire damage, fire damage to spells, crit chance for spells, crit multiplier maybe. So it's same stats, but also with plus one gem. So that's also very good. You can actually also get maybe fractured uh, ones. Because fracture means that the, uh, the stat that is actually fractured cannot be changed. So maybe you can get something with plus one spell skill gems. But these are very expensive by the way. This is for uh, the highest budget. I didn't even get this one. Alright. This is just an example. I played all the way with that cheap version actually. This is not my wand actually. This is just an example. So maybe you can also get a fractured one and use scorch fossils. That's the fire fossil. So maybe you can get some decent fire stuff with that and finally craft trigger so you can also do something like that if you want so this is how uh, ones uh, are basically for this build so on your offhand you want to use a shield obviously for some block and other uh, good stat stats so at leak start we are obviously playing life version so we want something that maybe gives life or maybe some resist if you need 
So stuff like that. Uh, you can actually get spell damage, uh, fire damage, plus one fire gems. So uh, there are actually similar stats like that uh, you can get from your wand actually. So maybe you can also play with a shield like that. There are actually other good stuff uh, that mostly for defense. Uh, some unique examples actually like Darasos Courage. A lot of block if you have blocked an attack, maybe spell. So there are different scenarios. So this is actually a good uh, early game. Uh, shield for defense actually because this doesn't provide any dps so if you think that your damage is fine this is actually a very good uh, shield and also provides block spell damage while on low life low life is actually got buffed in 3.14 so that actually means less than 50 percent of your life which is actually a very good percentage so you can just easily cap your block chance uh, if your health is low so you will have more survival ability there's actually vix lunaris another good shield a lot of life Triggered level 20 called Aegis, so this is actually a cold absorption shield that gets automatically um, triggered. You don't have to do anything at all. So you will have some uh, defense against cold damage from time to time. And also cannot be frozen, so you don't have to use a freeze immunity flask at all. So this is actually another good option. So these are actually defensive shields. So if you want DPS, just use the stuff that I explained uh, one minute earlier. Alright, so these are some good early uh, shield options. So once you get into energy shield version, your shield is obviously Prism Guardian that I explained in the gem section. So this way you can actually reserve lots of auras from your life. So you can actually reserve your life. So that means that you are actually a low life build later on. Uh, that's what LL low life means. So this is your end game shield. If you want to even uh, spend more, which I haven't actually, you can actually get a corrupted Prism Guardian. I'll just put some examples on the screen. So try to get a good implicit uh, corruption, implicit maybe, if you want to min-max the build. Helmet. At least start, nothing special, just get something with life, resistances, because you won't have any influence or whatever at day one, day two. So just use anything that you want. If you know any good, unique options, uh, you don't actually need, but maybe if you know something good, you can also go for that. Uh, after that, uh, once people start doing labyrinths, or you can actually find labyrinth enchants from maps also, because some encounters like Legion and I don't know, Metamorph, I believe, they actually drop labyrinth enchants, alright? So uh, once you start finding labyrinth enchants on the market, try to get something with labyrinth enchant. Uh, so the best enchant, in my opinion, is skill supported by spell slinger. Have 30% increased cooldown recovery rate, so your spell slinger will have reduced cooldown, obviously. So you can actually summon more volatile deaths. If you have any reserve issues at an early game, you can also get um, reduced mana reservation for spell slinger. That is also good, but for DPS, uh, this is actually very more important, in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to get a helmet with good rolls, you know, just get the correct enchant. Make sure that the helmet is not corrupted, obviously. After that, you can safely use Orb of Scarring and craft your own helmet. Uh, you can use Essence of Greed if you want for guaranteed life roll and just aim for some resistances. Or you can maybe use other essences so you can get some resist and uh, hope for a life roll maybe. So essences are a very good way to craft a very cheap helmet actually for early game. So once you get into energy shield later on, here is what I used. Crown of the Inward Eye, again same enchant, this is actually a very cheap helmet. This is a drop from Cirrus Awakener, uh, the boss you know, uh, most people still have issues while killing that boss. Uh, for some reason, yeah. This actually provides a lot of life, mana and energy shield, so very good. Also lots of transfiguration bonuses, uh, I'm gonna just put the picture, the descriptions on the screen. So this helmet both gives us survival ability, lots of mana, uh, not mana, let's say energy shield, because that's what's important. And also some DPS from those transfigurations, just check the, uh, just read the descriptions on the screen. And again, same enchant, cooldown recovery rate, so this is a very good and very cheap uh, helmet actually. So there's another helmet option, I haven't used this because I don't invest that much in my builds. Uh, that's why, because this helmet is actually very stupid, but this is actually your end game. Yeah, not end game, but this is actually the highest thing that you can buy, you know, the most expensive. I haven't used this by the way, alright, I'm explaining again, this is not something that I bought. So I just typed God Helmet as the title so you can know. This is actually a very, very, very expensive helmet. So if you really like the build, if you want to min-max it, if you want to just delete bosses uh, faster, because 
even without this kind of crazy investment, this build has lots of DPS. So this is technically your god helmet. So why is this helmet special? Uh, on Elder and Shaper bases, uh, people are just you know combining these. I am not actually sure how to craft it, so I won't say anything because this is a very hard craft. It seems after the harvest nerfs. So concentrated effect gem automatically in the helmet. We are obviously normally using that. Hypothermia because we are playing necromancer, we actually chill enemies thanks to the passives that I explained earlier. So that also works. A lot of damage from hypothermia. 30% more elemental damage because that is not a gem actually. This doesn't have anything to do with the gem uh, mana multiplier. So that is actually a free damage stat. Again, socket spells have 3% to crit chance. This is actually a base crit. So it doesn't mean that it is actually 3%. It's actually way more than that. And again, that is not a gem. So it doesn't have any multiplier. So you don't actually reserve more mana at all. So this is basically... Uh, Helms are obviously 4 link normally. So 6 link with that concentrated effect and hypothermia. Uh, 7 link with that more elemental damage. Actually a free 7 link because it doesn't reserve any mana. And finally, maybe seven and a half link, maybe even eight link with that socketed spells have 33% crit chance. So this is actually way better than a six link in the end, but this is a very expensive helmet. So consider getting something like this, or if you know how to craft it, just go for that. This is your actually uh, the highest budget helmet. But again, I haven't used this. Uh, you don't actually need this kind of crazy investment. But if you are one of those person, people, that actually likes investing lots of exalt into a build this is your best bet boots early on uh, your best bet are obviously high movement speed life and resist if you know any good uniques maybe auxiliary step if you want some dodge maybe i don't know maybe you want that if you have enough dexterity which, which you should have probably so maybe you can use that uh, nothing special actually at uh, day one day two so because this build requires cooldown so you can get more damage so once the Shaper and Crusader items on the market, you can actually get something with also cooldown recovery rate, plus the other stats that I mentioned earlier. So you can have lower cooldown uh, on your Spell Slinger, so you will have better DPS. So in the end game, the highest budget, you want a Boots with both cooldown, obviously, and Tailwind. You can actually get that. So Tailwind obviously provides action speed, which is attack speed and uh, movement speed and other speeds, but these uh, probably attack speed and movement speed are the only important ones for this build. So you will be faster actually. Uh, cooldown, already explained a couple of times, so you already know what that does. Plus energy shield, so this is a very good boot uh, for enchant. If you haven't killed recently, damage penetrates 10% elemental damage resistances. So this is actually very good for DPS, boss DPS. This is your best enchant in my opinion, uh, which is very powerful, but this is actually very hard to get. So if you don't like to do labyrinths, you can maybe get some service uh, by paying someone uh, with exalted orbs, obviously not RMT or anything like that, because the people actually does, um, people actually do labyrinth services. You can also go to the Forbidden Troll Discord, because that's where you can find those people easily. So make sure you get that Labyrinth Enchant somehow in the end because you want to min-max your build, obviously. By the way, this is not the boots that I used because, again, uh, this is actually a little expensive. At least maybe 10 exalt the good ones. That's why I actually used this. That I bought for 5 exalt, I believe. This was my endgame uh, boots, actually. Uh, just Tailwind, no cooldown. The energy shield was very bad. I picked Intelligence, that's why I, I was like, okay, this is good. Because Intelligence also provides energy shield. So this is actually this was actually the boots that I used in the videos. So this is way cheaper. You can also maybe skip cooldown uh, because Tailwind I believe is better. You want to be fast. Uh, you want to you know enjoy the game. So you can maybe skip one of the influences and get something cheaper. If you really enjoy the build, you can maybe get that the uh, highest you know the most expensive uh, boots that I showed uh, later on if you want. Body armor. Uh, click start obviously just some easy affordable pieces try to get a five link early on for a couple of chaos you don't even need a tabula rasa for this build you can easily play with five link because you won't probably have enough mana reservation for six link at uh, early days you know day one day two maybe so just get a five link energy shield and evasion bases are good you know the hybrid actually because pure energy shield isn't required for early game because this is a life build so try to get a chest a hybrid chest 
with both evasion and energy so you can actually easy color the item because the colors that you want are obviously blue and green that's why you want evasion and energy shield items uh, energy base let's say for your chest yeah uh, life resist just generic stuff you can actually buy this kind of stuff for a couple of chaos even at day one so don't even try to bother you know crafting this because you will change this uh, in the end this is just to survive the first couple of days maybe after that if you are still playing a li as life version here is actually a fun idea you can just use this if you want impulsas broken heart a uh, life some shock effect unaffected by shock which is very nice so shocked enemies you kill explode dealing 5% of their maximum life as lightning damage which cannot shock so this actually boosts our clear speed so you're gonna ask how are we shocking because we are a necromancer i will just put the uh, notable on the screen so you can uh, so i can remind you that uh plague bringer you know not this one wait wait, wait. <laughs> corpse pack yeah corpse pack enemies near corpses you spawned recently are chilled and shocked so this is not a uh, hundred percent shock because the character the monsters need to have near corpses actually but with this you can actually shock the nearby monsters automatically so your impulsa actually explodes uh, enemies so you can just use this if you want a better mapping if you want some fun mapping early on to survive the first couple of days maybe the first week depending on your play time uh yeah this is a very fun alternative and finally once you get to end game the energy shield version low life this is how you do that Sharon's wrappings so what is special about this chest chaos damage does not bypass energy shield Normally cast damage is automatically bypasses your energy shield. Even maybe if you have 10k energy shield, 9k, whatever, a lot of energy shield. If you don't have this kind of item, you will just get hit from your life uh, while hitting by a cast damage. That's why you can just die, <laughs> obviously, because energy shield doesn't matter alone for cast damage. If you use this chest, cast damage actually uh, gets uh, blocked by energy shield first. That's why you can safely reserve all your life. That is what low life means. We are obviously using Prism Guardian Shield. So we reserve all our life. Not all our life, but most of our life. So we can get some good auras, DPS, whatever. So that's why combining this chest with Prism Guardian Shield is a very good way to get some uh, auras and start playing as energy shield as soon as possible. So these two are your core items if you want to play as energy shield as soon as possible. Close. Early on, uh, just use whatever you want. Uh, life raises same stuff because you cannot find anything good at early game. So here is a good alternative for uh, the first days. This is actually normally very cheap, but I cannot say anything for future leagues, obviously. Oscar glows. So trigger level 10 assassin mark when you hit a rare or unique enemy. So if you still don't have your trigger wand, maybe you cannot find it yet. Maybe you couldn't. Uh, find a good wand or whatever this is actually a very good way to get some curse automatically because this is not also a trigger uh, this works all the time so if you hit separate rare targets under eight seconds you can actually uh, apply assassin mark on both of them uh, not simultaneously but you can just kill one and attack the other you understand the idea because on triggered ones there is actually eight second cooldown but on this there is actually not a cooldown at all so this is a very good and cheap way to get some assassin mark early on also gives us some life some dodge spell which actually is not that bad so this is actually not bad at all for leak start after that once the influenced items are on the markets here are some good examples uh hunter glows with honor chance honor uh, applies 10 percent damage taken by spells to enemies so this is a very good way to get some damage these are on hunter bases so you can just use something like this at uh, maybe a couple of days later so in the end once you get to energy shield here's what to use so first of all you want obviously a uh, glows with energy shield because this can easily go very uh, high in in p uh, prices these are actually very expensive once you get uh, once you try to put some good stuff on them so fingerless silk glows or sorcerer glows or anything that has good energy shield are actually your best bet so you want again honor obviously plus something else for double influence you can also craft your own with awakener orb obviously so other good stats are plus one maximum friends charges so friends charges again provides us more damage attack speed so which is nice 
You can also get Culling Strike, which kills enemies under 10% life, I believe. Maybe I'll just put the description on the screen automatically. So this is very good for bossing. You can just kill bosses faster. So Culling Strike plus Unnerve with some decent energy shield. That's a very good end game glows. Or maybe Frenzy plus Unnerve, which is way cheaper. Maybe you can also do that. So other other good stats are gonna be on the screen. So just follow those. So this is pretty much uh, your end game glows. Amulet early on because we are playing as life, something with life resistances, and because this is a crit build, crit multiplier is a very good way to get some damage. Um, maybe spell damage or fire damage that also works. So this is pretty much it. Later on, once we get to energy shield version, we want to be stun immune. That's why we are using presence of Chayula, which is a very popular amulet for low life builds. Stun immune. 60% chaos resistances which is very good so you will have good chaos resist because chaos resistances is very hard to get in this game and finally life converted to energy shield because this is a low life build we just reserve our life our life pool uh, doesn't matter that's why we can actually convert some that some of that life to energy shield so this amulet provides lots of good stuff and finally don't forget to anoint it with uh, some good stuff if you want some reserve, that is what I picked, uh, so I can actually reserve everything that you are seeing on the screen, you know, uh, on the path of building. That's why I picked Charisma, so I will have more reserve reduction. Uh, if you maybe decided to play with other gem setups, maybe, I don't know, if you maybe try to customize the build yourself, maybe you don't need that Charisma, but you will most likely need that. So make sure that you fix that mana reserve issue if you have any. Uh, that's why Charisma is your best bet in my opinion rings uh leak start life resist fire damage is good for some dps you can also pick diamond rings to get some crit chance which is fine these are very cheap rings by the way so if you are still playing life version uh, or maybe transition to the energy shield version but you want to use some other rings you can maybe also get opal rings and use uh, essence of let's just check anger on them uh, to craft your own rings if you want maybe they are expensive or hard to find because these are opal rings all right so you can just use that essence on the screen to get some guaranteed fire damage and aim for some life and resistances so these are actually very good early on rings you can actually make profit by crafting and selling these also at maybe early days uh, so yeah but in the end it doesn't matter if you're playing life or energy shield i believe these are the best rings circle of anguish so what are these rings? First of all, these rings have lots of combinations, so uh, be careful and don't buy the wrong one. So you want Herald of Ash reduced reservation plus some damage stat, like fire damage while affected by Herald of Ash or Herald of Ash buff effect. There are actually more stuff, Herald of Ash fire resistances, Herald of Ash plus one maximum resist. Uh, and I believe that's it, but I'm not sure. So they are not that good, obviously. So the main reason for these rings are to boost our Herald of Ash, but at leak start maybe you cannot use Herald of Ash if you are playing as life version, because we don't have uh, enough mana reservation. So definitely check those out uh, in the gem section. All right. So once you use Herald of Ash, you want to you know adjust that mana cost, mana reservation. That's why these kind of rings are actually very helpful to uh, help you with that mana reservation. Plus also provides some decent damage thanks to that other stat, fire damage or buff effect. And one final thing about these rings. These rings has, have actually random implicits. That's why they can go up in prices very easily. So my rings doesn't have actually any good stat. You know, one of that has move speed. And the other one has, I don't know, ready to have item found, which I don't even need. Alright, this doesn't actually provide any damage. So actually you can put some damage implicit. So I will just list a couple of those. If you know more, just go for that because there are actually lots of implicits in this game on sanitized items. That's why uh, maybe I skipped some, maybe I forgot some, all right? So fire damage, elemental damage. Um, if you need maybe strength or dexterity attributes, maybe you can just put those. Crit multiplier is very good. Uh, if you can apply double curse, maybe you want to anoint um, Whispers of Doom on your amulet, maybe if you want. Or maybe you have a corrupted amulet that applies additional curse. So if you have double curse option, 
Uh, you can also get a ring circle of anguish with flammability or elemental weakness curse, which is very expensive by the way. So if you have double curse option, if you want to invest for that, also make sure that you fix that um, double curse issue somehow, because normally you can only apply one curse. That's why you need a different source for additional curse, like a amulet or something like that, or whispers of doom, uh, anoint. Uh, that's pretty much it but i haven't obviously invested in that i don't have that kind of ring my rings were actually very cheap you know uh, just some basic herald of ash rings that's pretty much it about the rings and finally belt at early game uh, just some belt it can be a leather belt or heavy belt maybe you will need that strength uh, so you can pick heavy belt maybe but you can also get strength as a suffix uh, so you can also maybe use leather belts Life, resist, strength. If you have the veil option from June, you can also craft damage on a prefix for some DPS. And if you can afford maybe sticky and wise, they can also be good. But again, once the influenced items are on the market, you can actually get shaper or crusader bases for some cooldown recovery rate. These also exist on June items, by the way, once we unveil them from the uh, June, you know, the master. So make sure that you try to get some cooldown on your belt later on to boost your DPS. Again, life resistance, the same stuff. Damage, you can craft damage uh, to prefix. Uh, that's pretty much it. Once you get to energy shield version, obviously, you want energy shield base belts, uh, not uh, life this time. So crystal belts are very good for lots of energy shield. That is what I highly recommend. If you have a very good Stygian wise, maybe you can also use that. But cr cr um, crystal belts are cheaper and provides more uh, life effective life let's say effective hp which is uh, energy shield obviously uh, you will obviously want another energy shield for prefix so the belt actually provides lots of energy shield total plus again cooldown um that's pretty much the only uh, important stats actually but if you want to invest further you can also get maximum energy shield, which is again on crusader bases you can maybe craft these with dense fossils and hopefully get cooldown maybe you can just try that or just buy these kind of belts from other people. So energy shield, maximum energy shield. Uh, and cooldown, yeah, these are pretty much it. This is another option that is very expensive. I don't have this. Again, this is just a tear craft. Shaper plus Crusader. Lots of energy shield, cooldown. And spell damage if you got lucky maybe. If you know maybe how to craft. So this is a very expensive and GG belt actually. But I don't have this. Uh, this is just an example so maybe if you want to invest, you can just try to get some of this. In this part, I'm going to explain the flasks uh, that we are using, the possible, you know, other ver versions, maybe other flasks. Uh, I will also mention those. So first of all, if you are playing a life version, uh, you will probably want to use a life flask. Eternal life flask is good. You can just put bleed immunity. That is uh, the thing that I recommend. Staunching. Uh, you can just also craft that from Menagerie yourself. So Beastcraft is actually very good to craft some immunities. If you don't need life flask later on, you can just skip that if you want. So other good flasks. Uh, this is a crit build, so diamond flask. So your crit chance is lucky. That means that your crit uh, gets calculated twice. So if you fail to get crit on the first calculation, your crit will just get calculated again. And maybe you will just get, luck, uh, get crit on the second uh, calculation. Uh, if you fail that again, obviously you won't crit, so that's what crit lucky means. Uh, make sure you also craft a um, freeze immunity or curse immunity, that is very important. Uh, so we want those immunities, obviously, to survive. Quicksilver flask for movement speed. If you don't have freeze or curse immunity, whatever you are missing from your diamond flask, make sure you put this on your quicksilver flask. Because you want to be immune to freeze and chill effects, obviously, plus curse plus bleed and also in the end you can get a corrupt blood immunity jewel just a jewel whatever that you can put on your talent tree so that way you can actually skip uh, bleed immunity on your life flask or once you get to energy shield you won't obviously have a life flask obviously because that's an energy shield build so make sure that you fix that bleed issue in the end so you don't need to use a bleed flask for defense Ruminous Concoction because it's a block build and also provides a lot of armor. So try to get something with decent rolls. This is very good for defense, obviously. A Cinder Swallow Urn later on. This is another very powerful flask. 
Recover life, mana and energy shield when you kill an enemy. So very good for mapping. Crit chance during flask effect is nice because this has lots of veil options. So the final portion is actually different on each flask. So try to get something depending on your budget. But for DPS obviously crit chance during flask effect. If you want something for cheaper maybe at early leak you can also get regenerate life. Or even stun avoidance. Uh, that can also be good. And finally enemies ignited by you during flask effect take 10% increased damage. Uh, because we are igniting with our barrage um, frenzy setup because it has combustion also. Uh, we will ignite the bosses uh, obviously so you will have that 10% increased damage. Which is actually a more multiplier so provides a lot of DPS. So the flask, this flask is overall very good for both single target DPS and also mapping because it provides so much recover. And also it's an onslaught flask so you will have attack speed, cast speed and movement speed. So very powerful flask so definitely grab one as soon as possible. So another DPS flask option, Vizog. If your fire resist is the highest so you also need to check the uh, in the parentheses. So make sure that your fire resist is the highest even with the uh, over cap alright portion. So that is important. So if your fire resist is the highest, uh, you will actually get that fire penetration, which is actually very good for uh, DPS. Uh, later on, the most expensive flask probably is a Battle Fate flask. So this is a very good flask for DPS, obviously, because this is also a crit build, so this works uh, fully for this build. A lot of flat crit strike chance. So that's a flat crit, that means that you will, your crit will get even higher. So this doesn't actually provide one point whatever crit. This actually provides way more than that. Because it will also get calculated from your increased crit chance, from your gear and talent tree or whatever. So this provides a lot of crit chance. Consecrated grant created during effect applies 10%, up to 10% let's say. Increased damage taken to enemies. This is another more damage multiplier. So this, provide, this flask overall provides a lot of DPS. Plus this is a sulfur flask meaning that it will also create consecrated ground uh, obviously. Uh, consecrated ground also increases the enemy's you know, crit chance taken. 100% increased crit chance. So total this flask provides lots of crit and lots of damage taken. So definitely uh, worth the investment. So how to level with this build? Maybe if you are at leak start uh, which is obviously fine this is a very good build to play with zero budget at a league start very powerful very easy leveling so how to level with this build so this is well uh, i'm gonna show this part in the path of building uh, this is the reason uh, in the path of building click notes and bam uh, i wrote this myself this is a very detailed leveling guide that's why this is gonna be a, a written guide all right i'm not gonna even explain anything in the video so check this here uh, just progress slowly, make sure you understand what's going on in these sections. After Act 5, nothing special happens, that's why nothing is here. So make sure that you uh, just follow whatever is here. And also, the leveling trees. You know, leveling 1, start. Start with this, obviously. Leveling 2, just follow these, alright? You will be fine. And the leveling gems are gonna be here. Leveling gems bam 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 all right this is it very easy to follow make sure that you read here and that's pretty much it nothing to explain actually in the video so in this part i will just show you a couple of things in the path of building i will just check the talent trees real quick and finally the pantheons and the guide will be done probably so first of all uh, this is not final the once you are checking the path of building maybe there will be more stuff there are actually different uh, versions here, click start life version, energy shield, maybe a higher budget for li uh, life version, I will just add. There are obviously lots of items, so once you click these you will know what your options are. Uh, maybe if you know more stuff you can actually also check those. So try to uh, follow whatever you are doing at that time, alright. There is actually more talent trees here, leveling trees, obviously just follow these like this three four whatever life version 90 levels at a least start lower budget life version after that energy shield and game version so just check uh, these and don't miss anything there is obviously also leveling here which is very detailed that i wrote uh, myself also uh, uh, must this follow this don't make don't miss this all right don't miss anything make sure you know how to use path of building 
And finally gems. The cheap stuff, expensive stuff. I don't know, friends, link, trigger, everything is here. And also leveling gems here. So everything is in the path of building. Don't make any mistakes. Uh, make sure you follow everything uh, accordingly, alright? So I will just maybe show you a couple of jewels maybe in the talent tree. So maybe you will have better understanding. At the league start life version, we are not using any special stuff. Just generic tree. Uh, the jewels are empty right now, but I will just add some stuff for, you know, low budget. This is a low budget life version tree, alright? Nothing else to explain here actually. But I will just explain the clusters and some other unique jewels that we use in the end game Ener shield version. So transcendent flash. Crit multiplier per turn strength on unallocated passives in radius. This is one of the best um, places to put this. Because it requires unallocated passives. It's a crit build obviously. So you can get lots of crit multiplier thanks to this. So there are lots of strength here actually. You can see lots of strength. 20 strength here. Um, 10 strength here. So this is a very good place to get a lot of crit multiplier. So definitely worth the investment. We'll just check the clusters later on. This is just a normal jewel. Crit multiplier. Crit multiplier for fire skills. Energy shield and resist. Because fire skills are not that popular, these kind of jewels are actually way cheaper compared to other, um, let's say, tags. You know, gem tags like cold, lightning, because they are way more expensive. Fire builds are overall very cheap compared to other builds in this game. Uh, Watcher's Eye. So we are using Anger, Discipline and Zelotary as Auras in the end. So try to get uh, some of those. I will just uh, list every good stuff on the screen. So because Penetration provides lots of boss DPS, that's what I picked. And because I wanted more block, so I am tankier, that's why I also picked Discipline. So this is obviously a double Watcher's Eye, so only get one of these. Probably Penetration because you will want DPS to progress easier. So just try to get only a DPS one at uh, early on, you know. So once you have good um, good currency, let's say, you can just get a double one. This is actually very cheap, by the way, because this is not even used by most of the builds in the game. I actually paid like two or three exalt for this one. Very cheap for a double Watcher's Eye. But obviously the prices can be different because people are obviously going to play this build uh, in 3.15 and later on. That's why maybe this is going to be more expensive. So definitely worth the investment. Make sure that you increase your block chance. That's very important. And also check the other options that I picked on the put on the screen. Uh, before the clusters, yeah, finally. Um, an unnatural instinct. This is not needed. If you have the money, you can just get one later on. So this, what, what does it do? Let's just first check that. Allocate small passives in radius grant nothing. So anything that small that we got is actually not doing anything, but we actually didn't get anything. Uh, that's why this isn't important for this place. Grants all bonuses of unallocated small passives. So small passives are these, you know, these very small ones. These are not small, by the way, these are notables. So you cannot actually get these. So these are all smalls. So these are what we got. Corpse have life. Damage if you have consumed a corpse recently. Energy shield and life. Life also provides some energy shield because we are using at the energy shield version. Presence of Chayula. Life converted to energy shield. So that's why those lives are actually doing stuff. Some elemental damage here. So not that crazy actually. You can safely skip this. I just wanted to invest a little more because this build overall is not super expensive at all. That's what I figured out this is a good place to put this because we also get some damage here, you know. Uh, you can safely skip this, alright, because unnatural instincts uh, can easily go up in prices because most builds use this jewel uh, in different um, sockets, actually. Uh, we skip this. Crit multiplier again. Crit multiplier, spell, elemental damage. Spell damage, holding shield. Corrupted blood immunity is good, so make sure that you get this from one of your jewels. Uh, that's why you can also safely skip energy shield on one of your jewels maybe because these are way cheaper if you skip energy shield and finally cluster so main reason to use clusters are to get some defense actually so most of the stuffs here are actually providing defense so the base for large 
and that I picked is a spell damage base. Make sure you get something with eight passive skills. Anything more than that means that you want to um, spend more points, which is not ideal. That's why eight points is my best bet. So the most important stats, the notables, let's say that I am using mage hunter block spell damage and spell damage. So we want more block. All right. Plus conjured wall uh, spell damage block spell. If you have just a spell recently, so this will work all the time because we are using spells all the time, you know. So this overall uh, provides us lots of block. You can actually skip this. Uh, some spell damage hinder, whatever. Maybe you can skip this if you want, but this is also good. So that's why I picked this combination. But make sure that you get some block because that is important. This is a block build. For medium, I'm using something with uh, non-curse aura effect. This is actually also a little defensive option. Discipline has our effect. The other ones that we are not using, uh, we don't use grace and determination. Precise commander, crit chance, crit multiplier. There are other combinations. Maybe I'll just put some other notables on the screen. So just try to get some damage, maybe inner shield, thanks to discipline our effect. So both defense and offense in the same jewel. Nothing that crazy actually. This is a cheap jewel. For small, you can use inner shield bases with energy from Naut. Lots of energy shield, a hundred energy shield, a flood energy shield. That's why this is very good. And finally, here I am using another small cluster, uh, which is not very popular actually, but provides lots of defense. Gain one endurance charge every second if you have been hit recently. Enduring composure, that is the name of the notable. So this is just for some defense. So you will actually have more physical damage reduction. So Ender Charge provides that. I will also put the description maybe on the screen if I don't forget. Uh, this is pretty much for defense. If you don't want this for some reason, you can get another energy from now. But mitigation is very important. That's why I picked this. And that's pretty much it about the Talent Tree. Let's just also check the Pantheons here while we are at it. Uh, because the build is going to be stun immune in the end, uh, you can safely skip Brian King because this is mostly to avoid stuns but at leak start you can just play with this because without the Chayula amulet without the energy shield version we are not actually stun immune so you can just start with this later on once you get to energy shield version use any of these that you want I mostly use Arakali uh, reduce effect of shock reduce shock duration chaos resist against damage over time uh, lots of good stuff or I'm using Solaris, this is also very good. Take no extra damage from crit strikes. If you have taken a crit strike recently, this is very good uh, in maps with crit modifier, which actually helps a lot. So this is very good for mapping. Reduce element damage taken if you haven't been hit recently. Maybe that will also do some stuff. Avoid ailment from crit strikes. So these are the most important ones in my opinion. So try to use Solaris or maybe Arakali. Uh, this is up to you. These are both very good. For Miner, my best bet is Aberrat, unaffected by Burning Ground, because if there are any Burning Ground effects, it can be a map modifier or some monsters actually ignite, uh, not ignite, uh, burns the ground. That's why being immune to this actually uh, is very helpful, because you will notice that uh, burn damage while playing as Inner Shield. That's why this is actually very important, I highly advise you to use this. Uh, I won't even gonna explain the others, this is... The, I believe the most important one for uh, energy shield builds. That's why I will just highly recommend you to play with this. Well, we have come to the end of the journey. Uh, make sure that you maybe share this video with your friends. Make sure you like and subscribe. I upload regularly. I have lots of build guides and more will come. Obviously, I'm trying to build a healthy community here. So you can just play. Uh, some good builds and also communicate you know chat with us in the discord make sure that you join our discord make sure you you know maybe write your feedback if you maybe want to see more builds from me uh, you can also chat with me in the discord make sure that you write in the appropriate channels because there are lots of uh, channels in the discord that's pretty much it thanks for watching thank you for your support uh, that's it i will see you later